This portion of Tom's Real Food is brought to you by broccoli, pork belly, garlic, olive oil, and ginger. A new podcast that I'm going to start doing, and it's called Tom's Real Food. Now, what I'm doing here is I got inspired by this because of all the misinformation that's out there about uh, doing keto, carnivore, uh, or uh, the standard American diet that that um, is still plaguing our country. Uh, the the problem is, I I don't know for sure if we were lied to just to protect uh, big business. Uh, what I mean by that, big food, uh, also big pharma, and also the meat industry, because prices prices of meat have gone crazy. The quality of produce, to me, is is gone down gone down the tubes. So uh, spending a lot more money and getting sicker is basically what's going on. Now, I just had my blood work done, and uh, for those who don't know or, or follow, I've been doing keto uh, lifestyle for going on four years. This August will be my fourth year. Now, a little background, uh, real quick with it. Um, I, I did battle uh, bladder cancer for, for uh, quite a few years. I've had um, numerous tumors removed, and uh, I was told once by my doctor to get my, my affairs in order. Okay, that was a wake-up call. But what happened was I got the double whammy that hit me was as I was getting my treatment, I was getting BCG treatment. That seemed to be uh, the path that, well, we, that was taken okay, by my urologist. Uh, great doctor, straight shooter. I uh, I really liked him. Me and him sort of got along pretty good. And while I was getting my treatments, now the treatment is uh, one treatment is six weeks long. So you go uh, once a week, and you would get this uh, application of this BCG treatment. Now, if anybody doesn't know what BCG is, BCG was something they they back in the day they developed for tuberculosis, okay? And it seemed to work well with bladder cancer as far as shrinking tumors. But uh, I had actually 18 tumors taken out and uh, eight different surgeries in a course of three years, okay? Uh, when he told me to, Tom, I think it's time for you to get your affairs in order, that was a wake-up call. So uh, my third treatment, so that's every... One treatment was six weeks long. So I'm getting into this, you know, going once a week, once a week, once a week. Uh, then wait two weeks and I go back and start it again. Uh, after the third round of treatments, the nurse comes in one day. I'm getting ready for my <laughs> for the procedure, which is not fun. If anybody who has had it understands what goes on. I don't want to get too graphic here. Uh, anyway, the bottom line was is that the nurse come through the door and she said, Mr. Garvey, I'm here to take your blood. Okay, well, for what? Well, uh, this treatment may cause um, diabetes, type 2 diabetes. So I was like, wow, what are you talking about? You know what I mean? I, I know people who have diabetes or type 1 diabetes. I didn't know. I was, I was in the dark with this whole situation. So the bottom line was, was I got this the shot, and lo and behold, my blood sugar was... I think it was like 240. I think that was it. Doctor comes blasting through the door. And he said, well, Tom, he said, you have type 2 diabetes. I can't do this uh, treatment anymore. Okay, because it'll it'll flame. It'll, it'll actually ruin your um, liver. So totally naive to this whole, <laughs> to this whole fact. Um, and he, he was the type of guy who, another guy from the East Coast, I believe he was from Connecticut. Liked him a lot. Uh, I'm sure he's well retired now. But um, treated me with, with respect but honesty. And that's what I want from a doctor. So after all, it's my life that I'm that I'm worried about and not statistics of, well, if you're this age, this is automatically happening to you. I don't I don't believe it. One one word of that. So anyway, um, now now I gotta deal with diabetes. So now they send me to an endocrinologist. 
I, I have no clue what's going on. I am like so far in the weeds. Now, I'm a retired chef, so I know food. I know what's, you know, carbohydrates. It, you know, we, we were taught, you know, uh, protein, carbohydrate, and, and a vegetable, you know, some, some type of uh, veg. Bread, okay, and, and move on from there. And then the sweet dessert afterwards. So basically, back in my day, I was, we were probably, I was probably handing out di- type 2 diabetes by the plate bowl. I mean, that's, I'm just joking around with that. But the, but the bottom line was, after I started doing research into what was going on, endocrinologists gave me um, a meal, a meal uh, lineup to follow, okay, almost like a pyramid type of thing. And it was like stuff that I mean, wouldn't, you wouldn't even think about. But what I did do is I got into juicing, okay? Now, I started doing the juicing, and I started losing weight, okay? Um, still getting checked uh, every couple months for my bladder, which is not fun. Uh, if anybody went through a cystoscope, they understand what I'm talking about. Uh, and by the way, when I would get this BCG treatment, okay, um, my wife <laughs> she couldn't use it. We only had one bathroom. She couldn't use the toilet. She had to go to uh, our daughter's house. Uh, to use the bathroom because you had to wait um, almost like 20 some hours for whatever poison that was in me that I was urinating out. You know, it, it can, they thought it could, could be uh, contagious uh, or it just wasn't good for anybody else to be around it. Anyway, long story short, um, I still, like I said, started doing juice. Well, listen to this lady and this doctor and she's telling me, well, um, you know, try to try to put a little bit more green in there and blah, blah, blah. But my diabetes was getting worse. So I'm saying, what the hell is going on here? So now I took the bull by the horn. I, I turn around and I said, you know what? Here's here's what's going to happen. Uh, I'm going to back off all this stuff because my sugar levels are way too high. Way too high. You, 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 you're talking a little over 300 and stuff. So what happened was... Uh, from all this going on, the stress that that I was dealing with, uh, I wound up in a hospital. Heart palpitations. Uh, it's it's the circle. I call it the circle that you chase your tail around, one medication after the other, after the other, after the other, all the way around. So naturally, blood pressure pills, uh, also uh, statin because you know what, your uh, cholesterol is very high, and cholesterol can lead to heart disease. Like. Come to find out, we'll go. We'll go about that down the road a little bit here. So anyway, I wound up in a hospital, and they said, "Well, Mr. Garvey, your blood." They, they would take, test my blood, and uh, Mr. Garvey, your your blood is like 150. Here, the rules in the hospital is anybody has blood uh, glucose over 150, we have to give you insulin. Okay, well, whatever. Well, they give me the insulin, and nothing, nothing happened. Actually, my blood sugar went higher. So this this has been my battle since 2008, uh, fighting with type 2 diabetes that, that causes high cholesterol, that cla- causes uh, LDL problems, HDL problems, uh, triglycerides, all of that talk that, that when you go to the doctor, you can almost now, I look back at it and I laugh about it because... I look back and you can almost program what's going to happen next. Well, lo and behold, we moved to Florida and uh, all of a sudden I started having um, having a lot of trouble. I mean, I'm trouble walking. I, I broke my, my uh, right leg in January of 2014 uh, in a cast, you know, eight weeks, went, went through all that nonsense, then tried to rehab. They put hardware in. I think there's like 13 screws and a couple plates. Uh, one of my ankle broke my I broke my broke my leg in four different places in the winter time. Slip fell on the ice. So now it starts where you know you're starting to get into that old man syndrome. <laughs> you know, well this is going to happen, and you got to try this, got to try that. <clears throat> well, after after moving down to Florida, I'm walking with a cane, uh, and the humidity and stuff. Everybody's blaming. You know, it's humid out. It makes your bones ache the whole bit. Uh, I just about had enough. I, I just said, you know what? I went to see uh, the cardiologist and he said, well, you know, with all these issues that you got going on here, he said, I think we need to do a heart catheterization. I'm going to go in and see exactly what is 
what's going on? Okay. <clears throat> well, we skate, we set it up. I go in and I don't know if anybody had that or re remember having it, but you were awake. They just numb you up pretty good. And I could, I can feel them going in. Uh, matter of fact, I had that year, I had two. I had two ca uh, heart catheterizations. Uh, the first one, I went through my leg. The second one, I went in, in through my arm. And But the, the first one, they turned around and said, well, you know what? Um, everything looks good. You know, I don't see any, any heavy plaque or anything like that. But I am going to put one in for preventative uh, maintenance or for, for down the road was his exact words. He said, but it's the smallest stent that we install. And uh, you'll be all right for it. Okay? You're the, you know. You're the heart surgeon. All respect. I was always taught growing up as, as, a, as a kid that you respect the, the doctor. Whatever the doctor said, you primarily did because he put a lot of hard work into getting to where he is and you know, he'd do no harm. I'm not bashing doctors. Don't get me wrong with that. Not at all. We need doctors left and right. But the problem is uh, once it comes, if he went into my heart, and I had no, no, he, his exactly what he told me as he was doing it. He said, this to me looks like it might be anywhere between 40 to 60% blocked. Uh, okay. You know, but it was too late. He was, he was already up in there. So he put the stent in. Now I'm on a medication. Okay. That I cannot get off. Of. Now that's, that was in early, um, early 2015. All right. So I'm on this medication there. So now I'm still feeling bad. I mean, hard time walking, uh, just just miserable, just aches and pains the whole bit. So I always like to, you know, go on, on the internet and surf around different stuff. And I started going on to YouTube. And I, I picked up on a couple different doctors that was talking my language, saying exactly what I was going through. So I said, you know what? Let me look into this keto, this ketogenic lifestyle. And <clears throat> once I once I discovered a couple of different doctors that I was that I was watching and listening to, um, and one one particular doctor uh, hit the nail on the head with uh, as far as exactly what my problems are. And he went back and looked into the he was he did research and looked back into Doctor Atkins for the Atkins diet. Now that got a bad rap, really did. Uh, but in the same token, the, the keto uh, diet, if you want to call I call it a lifestyle, the keto lifestyle or Atkins was actually helping children that had ep epilepsy. All right. So uh, they were less sugar, no, very little carb and a high fat diet. Sounds crazy, especially from the era that, <laughs> that I grew up in. Uh, you know, I went through that whole scene where, uh, low fat, no fat whatsoever. I had friends of mine that that were joggers and runners. I don't do none of that, but but the the idea was these guys were dropping dead because they were on a high carbohydrate diet. So now I'm starting to put two and two together. I'm starting to yeah, this this thing sounds like it. And plus, it was controversy. It had a lot of controversy about it. And I like to look into you know kind of stuff like that. Uh, especially coming from the food and end of it. So my challenge was, I'm going to try this. So I did some more research, still naive about it. All right. And then all of a sudden, uh, I guess the first four to six weeks that I was on it, I lost, I lost like almost 30 pounds in six weeks. I was like flabbergasted. I'm starting to feel pretty good, moving around a lot better. And I go back for my checkup with with the, my cardiologist, and I said, you know, a couple of these pills you got me on here, I just they're, they're not, I don't seem to work, and I feel like sick to my stomach from them, and this and that. Okay, we'll take you off two of them. But you got to stay on that statin because your your cholesterol is very high. So, point of order. Back in the mid to mid to early sixties, late sixties, in in, in the, that ten year period. All right. Uh, this is when it started coming to in, into play was with cholesterol. Um, I think it was Dr. Keyes was saying, oh, you're the, the, the fat is, is killing people left and right. Uh, looking back into it, 
the, th the threshold for high cholesterol was over 300. Okay, over 300. Now I'm, I'm thinking back and I'm saying, well, it used to be that, that high. And then I remember in the late 70s, early 80s, they, they've dropped it down to 250. Uh, 250 was anything over 250, you're considered to have high cholesterol. Then late 90s, they dropped it again. So I'm, I'm looking at this, they're moving the goalpost, okay? And what happened is, <clears throat> now it's 200. Or they would like to have it below 150. W what, what is it? Okay. Now, being naive about it, about the whole thing, uh, whatever they said, the doctor said, yeah, I'm taking this pill. Well, I was on a statin for a while. And I tell you what, it, it, it just didn't feel right for me. Whatever. There again, I'm not, I'm not bashing anybody. But that's the standards that the doctors were following. They put up a set of, set of standards, and they were following this right through. Well, getting back to the keto, uh, I was doing great on it, feeling really good, lost a, lost a ton of weight, went through that summer. I was swimming, playing golf. My leg didn't bother me no more, put the cane away. Uh, I was feeling really good. But then here's what happens. It happens to everybody. The second half of this podcast is brought to you by me, Tom Garber, the Keto Cook. Tune in Wednesday, July 17th. And see how I'm lowering my blood sugar. All right, let's get back to the podcast. Feeling really good. But then here's what happens. It happens to everybody. Raise your hand. Come on, raise your hand. Anybody who's out there who did keto or carnivore, all of a sudden you pass that pizzeria. One slice is not going to help. Not going to help. It's not going to hurt. I can have a hamburger with the bun on it. If I just do, uh, if I do 100 carbs or less, I'll be fine. If I do 120 carbs, I'll be fine. Or maybe I should, maybe I should just, if I eat a salad for the weekend, I'll be good and go back on a horse again. You know, it's all hogwash. It's all, it's all garbage. It's all junk. That's why when you go into the store and you see keto friendly chips, okay, in a real small bag and it's seven dollars. That should be an eye opener to you that it's a money making deal. Now, getting back to the keto lifestyle, does it work? Absolutely, it works. Does it get bad bad uh, rap on it? Yes, absolutely, it does because the standards they're making money on the standards. And when I say they, I don't mean the doctor or whatever. I'm talking about big pharma is putting this stuff out. Even big, uh, when I say big foods, um, all the big food corporations, okay, are making money on it. When they're, when they're saying keto friendly, okay, and people who start keto, out, the, out they go. <clears throat> and what do they look for? Oh, this is good. Oh, look, net carbs. I have never in my life heard of net carbs. The funniest thing of all to me is keto bread. Sorry, no such thing. Now, I, I, get in, I, I don't argue with people. I just let them talk, and then I'll just say, okay, I make my own frames, and I'll, I'll move away from them. Uh, the other biggest fraud that, that was, was put out there was um, coconut flour and almond flour. Now, all the issues I had with, with my so-called heart problems, uh, the doctor told me a handful of almonds is good. Uh, you know, nothing wrong with almonds. But if you eat too many almonds, they can become toxic. So I'm watching these people on other, other people who are... Uh, keto and you know we guess today we're gonna make um, keto bread yeah. okay uh, or and they pull out a big big container of protein powder and all this stuff like that that's processed that's highly processed foods okay does it work does it work some people it does just like the sweeteners okay we'll get into that also but almond flour to make any kind of keto friendly breads or whatever so one cup of almond flour is just about a hundred, just about a hundred uh, nuts that they crush up, pummel, whatever. And that, that's equivalent to 96 to a hundred of almonds. Okay. Now, this is what sticks out in my mind. My cardiologist told me, now this is coming from the man himself, handful of nuts. Okay. 10 to 15. Okay. Is plenty. 
You don't want to do any more than that because then it can start irritating your stomach. It can start bothering you because almonds can become toxic. His words. So now I'm watching these people doing this with, with almond flour. And I'm saying, what are you doing? And you, you, all you're doing is hurting yourself. You, you, you're going one way and, and you're hurting yourself. So it, whether the carbohydrates are high on it or not. And then the next thing is they come out with net carbs. We started talking about net carbs. That's where I fell in, into the hole. I fell into the rabbit hole and I, I can have it because it's going to satisfy my craving. All right. Remember that word, craving. So what happens is now uh, I'll have, you know, I seen in the store, I, I seen, uh, I'm not going to mention any, any brand names, but you know who you are. Uh, zero net carbs. Keto. Hmm. I told my wife, I said, you know what, let's, tr- let's get it. I'm, you know, and I'm, I'll make, we'll make a little taco. I'll just have one. You can't have just one taco. I'm sorry. Anyway. Once, once I started doing this, now I can, all of a sudden my blood sugars are jumping back up again. I went into a stall, and that's when I turned around. And I said, you know what? I'm going to go back to where I was. So, moral of the story. I lost 40 pounds when I was in Florida. lost 40 pounds and starting to go back to, I call it junk food, uh, junk keto. Going back into that. Not only did I get the 40 pounds back, but I gained 20 more. So now I'm 60 pounds in the negative. Fat. Became a fat guy again. Blood sugar went back up again. I mean, couldn't walk. Had to start walking with the cane. The whole bit. Trying different supplements and everything else like that. So the moral of the story is, and the reason why I named this uh, Tom's Real Food. Now. Moved to, uh, I'm, I live now in Las Vegas, great place, um, and I went stone cold keto. I started, I started my YouTube channel back in, uh, I believe it was 2021, 20, August 4th, 2021, 20, 20, and I'm going into my fourth year now. And I started with this, and I, I you know, and got real, real ugly with it, and, and got away from all the, the uh, hype of keto foods, or you can have this. I had a friend of mine, I had a friend of mine that started, Hey Tom, this is pretty good and everything like that. Hey, I'm looking into these fat bombs. No, 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 no. Too early, too early to even think about that kind of junk. But, but here, here's the kicker. Um, on my channel, if you, if you follow and you watch, I do clean cooking, clean food. Now I do use olive oil, do use butter. Uh, and I, that's what I cook with. I use regular olive oil, not virgin olive oil. I use salted butter, okay? And that's what I cook any uh, any of my meats in and or my vegetables, if I saute that up. And basically, that's what I do. I look at it this way. If I take a broccoli, a whole head of broccoli, look at that. Turn it around. Go in the store and look at it. Even read the little rubber band on there. See if you can find any ingredients. That's clean eating. Look at everybody went crazy with ribeye steaks and stuff. I like the New York strip. It's they're not um, they're not as tender, but I tell you what, to give you that good beefy flavor. And once you get started doing this, the whole idea is to be satisfied. So, what do I mean by satisfied? Well, here's here's what I was doing. I would eat my whatever broccoli and a steak. Sometimes I would just eat the meat, almost carnivore. And but my blood numbers were dropping, 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 dropping. I have a video out where my when I was probably six months into it, my blood sugar was back to 110. That's phenomenal. But there again, falling in into place with everybody else that was doing keto. All right. Instead of me sticking to my guns, I was starting to have, like I said, uh n- uh, net zero carbs, to, you know, tortilla shells. I even fell for the um, uh, Ezekiel bread. Okay, that's like eating a piece of plywood, but it was keto friendly and all that stuff. I uh, started eating um, stuff that contained a little bit of sugar in it. All right, I even tried uh, monk fruit. I tried stevia. All that stuff, no good. I, I can't do it. 
I just can't do it. Now, by the way, I'm going to be 70 in uh, October. So this is a challenge, a big challenge for me. Uh, I, I play music, as you see right here. I play in a band. I uh, pretty pretty active, and I, I'm enjoying life right now. But I slipped, I slipped off off the uh, the plan, and I started, like I said, started riding that down all the different rabbit holes where people were making these keto brownies. Come on, really? Come on, come on, stop it. So. This series, what I'm going to do is, uh, Tom's Real Food, is I'm going to be putting in some, uh, a little bit of videos of what I make. We're going to talk about that. Uh, please, if you, if you would, uh, hit that like, subscribe button. And uh, if you like this podcast, please leave a you know, little comment. And I'm recording these, so I'm going to be putting them up uh, through YouTube. This is my first time doing it, so if I have any kind of blunders, forgive me. What we're going to do is next trip is we're going to talk about my blood numbers and how I reacted with my door, uh, doctor. I am going to, matter of fact, we'll just touch base on this a little bit. So getting, getting back to, um, in Florida, you know, with the doctors and stuff like that. And they told me that hey, what, what you're doing now is not sustainable. It's not going to, it's not going to work. Go see this one, go see that one. And when I did fall off that, that, that time, this is twice now I fell off the wagon. Um, and my health got worse. That's, that's what I'm trying to explain to uh, to you right here. If you are type two diabetic and you're having trouble, okay, getting your numbers right, um, uh, what to eat, uh, I, and I get it. Not everybody's a chef or, or or a great home cook or anything like that. You're just trying to get through with your family and 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 w- what can you eat? So the, the regular standards I went back to. Uh, make I was making bread. I was making pizza. Uh, you know all kinds of crazy stuff. Uh, ice cream. I was eating ice cream. Then and the other thing is, then you find keto ice cream. Please stop it. Please, you know it, it's not. You, they're actually these people are actually hurting uh, human beings. They're actually hurting people that have problems. And for the almighty buck, um, they're, they're 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 just they don't care. Plain and simple. So you gotta you gotta treat yourself for your health. Okay, a doctor's gonna. A doctor cannot help you when with a 10-minute office visit. Try this, do that, go get blood work, try that, do this, boom, walk away. <clears throat> that doesn't work. So you got to take control of yourself. Um, right now, I'm doing carnivore because um, this time last year, uh, playing in a band, I went to get up on a stage and my knee gave out. Now, the story behind that is real quick. After we get done playing, what, what do we do? We go to a diner. We, I call it a diner. We go to a, a casino out here and have uh, late night snacks, whatever. I started out just eating burgers, a cheeseburger with bacon, no roll, no nothing else, no French fries, and I was doing good. But then I, there again, that's this is how I fell behind. I can have, I've been doing this three years. I know how to do it. I, I know how to get back on a horse again, but it never did. What happened was I hurt my leg because inflammation went back. Arthritis kicked back in again. My immune system fell apart just from eating a little bit of, of you know, breads and, and, and stuff like that. So <clears throat> now I was four months in bed. Four months I couldn't walk. All right. <clears throat> Started feeling a little bit better and bam, the knee blew out again because of what I'm, what I'm eating. So with that said, I don't want to win back too much more. I do appreciate you. Um, if you have problems there again, I'm not a doctor. So, I mean, I'm going to hit, get hit with that. I, I could, I could really tell you that one. Uh, I'm not a doctor, but, uh, this lifestyle is what changed me and got my numbers. If I can help one person out there, uh, to get their life back in order again, get control of yourself. Don't listen to what, what you know, doc, well, you got to try this. You got to try that. So, well, um, the next podcast, we're going to go over what, me and my doctor went through just a couple days ago. So, all right, everybody. Listen, thank you for watching. I really do appreciate it. Um, if you like this, please leave a comment. Um, I want to try to do this. I'd like to do it twice a month, but right now with the schedule and everything I'm doing, um, once a month might be might be the answer. But I want to get some feedback. I want to see uh, exactly if this is something that people are interested in or uh, or not. Okay, don't forget to hit that like, subscribe button, and I'll catch you next time 
here on Tom's Real Food. Tom Garber, the Keto Cook. Hit that like, subscribe. See you next trip.